Hey there, Sam. In programming, there's a development style called test-driven development, TDD for short. In simple terms, it means to write our test before we write our code. So the idea of TDD is that it forces us to think about how our app will behave before we even start coding. Once we define all the expectation and behavior in our test, then we'll start writing our code and make our test pass. If all of our tests passed, that means our code satisfies our expected behavior and therefore the code should work. TDD has a long history now, and it is a good way to write code as it has enormously reduced the numbers of bugs in large enterprise apps. So there are a lot of big companies out there really put a heavy emphasis on TDD. I'll show you a quick example on how TDD would look like in practice. Now suppose in our app, we need to perform a few arithmetic operations, such as adding, multiplying, and subtracting numbers. Let's create an aromatic helper class for that. I'll create a new folder called math in the helper directory. And in there, I'll create a new class called aromatic helper. So in the class, we'll add a few math functions, such as add and minus. And from here on is where the TDD fun begins. We should stop writing our code at this point and start writing our test. So let's create a test for the aromatic helper I'll go to the unit test directory and create a new test class. And because I'm lazy, I'll simply copy and paste the example test class and rename it to aromatic helper test. Once we're done, let's start testing our add function. We need to think about what sort of behavior will the add function have. Again, there are two types of testing, the happy path testing and the sad path testing. So for the happy path testing, I'll start with the most obvious behavior, which is to test if we can add numbers together. Now, when I'm writing tests for TDD, I like to first write down all my test cases before I start writing the test code. Some people prefer to write the test code directly after they define the test case, but that's not me because I know my brain is limited and I can be forgetful. I would much prefer to write down all the test cases at once so I don't need to think about what test to write later on. The test cases that I listed here also serve like a to-do list for us to complete this test class. All right, let's keep going. For the second happy path test, we would test if the add function would take in multiple arguments. Now for the set path, I will test if the add function can only take in numeric arguments. So if we try to fit it non-numeric arguments, such as array or string, it would throw us an error. And our add function should also accept at least one argument. If the user did not pass in any argument to it, it should throw us an error. All right, I think that's enough. Let's start writing our test code. First thing first, we'll run our PHP unit watcher. So PHP unit will run our code while we're writing our test. So let's go to our terminal and we'll run the composer script that we defined in the previous lesson. We just need to run the aromatic helper test. So I'll pass in a filter argument. Okay, it's now up and running. We'll go back to our test and start writing our test code. So for the first test, we'll first set up the environment to run our code, which is to set up two numbers. And we'll define our source of truth. That is the sum of both numbers that we just defined. Then we'll run our add function and pass in num1 and num2. And finally, we'll assert the result. It won't work at the moment. As you can see here in the terminal, our test is failing because we haven't implemented the logic in our add function. So let's start doing that. The typical TDD approach would be writing the minimal code so that our test can pass. So let's go to our add function. Even though that I know the add function needs to take in an arbitrary numbers of arguments, but in order for us to pass the first test, I'll just make it to take in two arguments for now. And the add function will simply return num1 plus num2. And back to our terminal, we can see that our test is now passing. And now we move on to the next test. This time we want to test if our add function can take in multiple arguments. And logically, we know that our code at the moment will not be able to handle this because we have only written the bare minimum to let the first test pass. But that's the principle of TDD, and we have to see through it. For now, let's write the code for the second test. I'll copy the setup from our first test and add a new number. And now going back to our terminal, as expected, our test has failed. So let's go to our add function and refactor our code. To make our function takes in an arbitrary numbers of argument, we can use a splat operator, which is a triple dot. So the triple dot operator will pack all the arguments into an array. What we need to do in the function body here 
is to loop through this array. And for each loop, we'll add a number to the sum and return the sum at the end of the function. So this code here should do the trick. We'll go back to our terminal and we're not seeing any errors, which is great. And again, that is the development style of TDD. We're trying to pass one test at a time and constantly refactoring our code. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the typical TDD approach. That is, to write code just to pass one test at a time. To me, it is not very productive since we need to constantly refactor our code. What I do instead is to look at all the tests and implement the code in one go. So for the rest of the two tests, we need to put in validation that checks for numeric arguments and also a minimum of one argument. Let's write our test code. So if we try to pass in data type other than number to our add function, we would expect an error. We need to call the expect exception method to run this test. We would expect an invalid argument exception. We have multiple data type to test here. We have strings, array, now, boolean, and function. Let's move these guys into their own test case because ideally one unit test should only test for one thing. Now that we have finished writing our test code, let's go back to our terminal and we see failures as expected. So let's go to our add function and we'll add a check to check for the type of the number inside the for loop. If the number is not a float or an integer, then we'll throw the invalid argument exception. Once we're done, go back to our terminal and our tests are now passing. Great. And while we're in here, Let's also implement the check to see there's a minimum of one argument. If that's not, we'll throw another invalid argument exception. Let's go back to our test. For our last test, again, we'll expect the invalid argument exception and we'll simply call our add function without passing in any arguments and go back to our terminal and we now see green. Great. And that is a quick introduction to TDD. Although our example here is quite trivial, but it demonstrates the process of TDD, and I hope that it gives you a better idea on how TDD looks like. We still have the minus method to test on. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Again, just a personal opinion before we end the lesson, the standard process of TDD can be time consuming, and sometimes they can be quite distracting. I tend to define the test function first, then I write my code logic, and then the test code. It works great for me, but it might not be suitable for you. So feel free to find your own way to write tests. Key takeaway for this lesson, test-driven development, or TDD for short, is the idea of writing tests first and write the code later. In standard TDD, we would write a bare minimum code to pass our test and refactor our code as we progress to the more advanced tests. That's it for this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.